Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will share how you can implement navigation on a multi-platform project with the Decompose library. So I'm pretty sure many of you are now aware that there is something called Compose Multi-Platform, which we can use to build iOS and Android apps together with Compose UI. However, normally navigation works quite differently on iOS than it works on Android. And now we have a Decompose library, which is there for a longer time than there is Compose Multi-Platform, which you can now use to have the navigation logic itself in our shared code in a Cartoon Multi-Platform project. And then we can take that shared logic for navigation and use it in our native section with a minimal amount of code. So in particular, what we'll build is this little app here. As I said, it uses Compose Multi-Platform, so it's only one UI. And we're going to have a screen a with a text field and a screen B so we can enter something like hello world in the text field and that will then be the navigation parameter for the next screen so if we click next screen you can see there's also a screen transition which I will show you here it displays that parameter value and then we can click go back to pop the back stack get back to the previous screen we can also see that the state is properly restored also if there are screen rotations you can see everything is properly retained as we are used to with the view models in native Android. And the same obviously works on iOS. So if we enter test here, go to the next screen, there is just a similar screen animation. You can see we see our test string here and if we click go back, we get to the previous screen where we can then enter something else and we again get to this screen. In this video, we don't have to write a single line of iOS code. It's really all Kotlin 100%, including all that navigation logic and you will learn how that works. And before we start, let's first of all understand what Decompose really is. So Decompose is just a Kotlin multi-platform library. As you can see, I really recommend the docs here because this video will be an introduction to navigation. So how we can use parameters, how we can first of all navigate, how we can go back, how we can pop the backstack, these kinds of things, how we can retain the state. But navigation itself is quite complex. You can dive much deeper into that with deep linking, with uh, process death restoration and all that kind of stuff. But that is all supported by Decompose. So if you want to really build a real app with that, then take a look at these docs. They are quite good. I personally found it hard to get into this decompose logic when I first heard of this, but I think after this video, it will be quite clear to you and then it will also be much easier for you to resume and dive deeper into this topic. But the idea of Decompose is that we break down our code into lifecycle aware business logic components. So in the end, that is exactly what we are used to on Android. If we have an activity, that is a lifecycle aware component because we have some kind of start of the lifecycle, which is on create, and we have an end of the lifecycle, which is on destroy. So all in all, we have some kind of lifetime of our activity. Another lifecycle component would be a view model. A view model would have a different life cycle than our activity because that is exactly the purpose of them. View models live longer than activities, so we put our state in these view models rather, so they are not destroyed when the activity is uh, destroyed, for example, with a configuration change. And what Decompose now allows us to do is to define our own life cycle aware components, like our own view model, but all that in the shared code of a Kotlin multi-platform project. So it's really pure Kotlin code. And to get started with that, I would like to ask you to go to this website, which I'll put in this video's description, of course. So kmp.jetbrains.com. And here you will get this Kotlin multi-platform wizard, which you can use to create a very empty Jetpack Compose multi-platform project because there's quite some setup involved and this tool just uh, creates that initially for you, so sets up all the dependencies and all that kind of stuff. Make sure to choose some kind of product name, a fitting package name, and then you want to select Android and iOS. You want to share the UI with Compose Multi-Platform, and no, we don't want to have a desktop app and a server app. We also don't need, so then you can click on download, it will download a zip file, extract that zip file, and then you can just open that um, extracted folder directly in Android Studio. Then when you open this, it will look somehow like this. So there will be a readme file. And other than that, we have our very normal Kotlin multi-platform structure. So we want to select the product view. So we just get a little bit better overview here. And that is a little bit different, at least that changed um, that we now only have one Compose app module. And that is then structured into Android main for our Android app part, common main for the shared code, and iOS main for the uh, iOS specific code. The first thing we want to do here is want to open the build.gradle file of our shared module. 
and we want to add the dependencies we need in order to use the decompose library. So down here, we can find the Android specific dependencies and the shared dependencies. And you can also see that nowadays Kotlin multi-platform uses version catalogs by default. So we have one central place of managing our versions. That is also where we want to declare our remaining versions. We want to find that in our Gradle folder. Uh, libs.versions.toml. And here at this point, I really just recommend you to take a look in this video's description copy the or go to my github repository and then copy this file and paste it so you have the versions i will just copy these over from my prepared project so i will just paste them all here if we take a look at what i just added here on the one hand um, decompose as you can see i really recommend you to use at least this uh, version 2.2.0 alpha because in alpha 01 and alpha 03 there were some changes and i did not want uh, that this new changes once they become stable will make this video outdated. That is why I really want to stick to this alpha version. So that is the decompose library, as I said, just helps us to build these lifecycle aware components. Then we have some extensions for Compose JetBrains. Um, that is uh, quite a strange version name. Um, it's currently experimental, of course, just as Compose multi-platform is, but that allows us to now take these lifecycle aware components with our Kotlin specific navigation and routing logic and then apply that routing logic in our Compose UI. We have Kotlin Axe Serialization JSON so that we can just serialize classes using Kotlin. And I think last but not least, we have the Kotlin Serialization Gradle plugin down here. And we can then go to our build.gradle file again and apply these versions, mostly in our common main source set. So here we want to have our implementation. On the one hand, libs.decompose. Um, libs.decompose, no? Oh, we need to synchronize first, of course. libs.decompose, no, something failed. Mm. Okay, I had to remove this implementation line in order to sync, but now we should be able to add this back. So libs.decompose, um, yeah, just like that. And then we want to have libs.decompose.jetbrains as well for the Compose multi-platform specific uh, decompose logic. And then last but not least, we want to have Kotlin serialization. So libs.kotlinx.serialization.json. And we also want to take this decompose library and apply it in our Android specific code. And last but not least, scroll up and apply the Kotlin serialization Gradle plugin. We do this with this alias block libs Kotlin serialization. That is how we can use version catalogs to apply all these dependencies. You can then click sync now to apply these changes in our app. And then we are ready to start defining our lifecycle aware components. And we want to do that in our common main source set, of course, because that is now really our shared code, which we can share between all platforms. In this case, Android and iOS. But of course, if you're also targeting something like desktop or later even web, then you can have one central place where you define the same navigation logic and reuse that on all platforms without redefining it. So here in the Kotlin package, we want to create a new directory called navigation or navigation specific classes. And in there, I want to create a new class called root component. This is really the core of the decompose library that we have some kind of root component. And when I say component, I really mean such a lifecycle aware component now. The root component will just live as long as the application does in this case, because it's really meant to be like that and it will host all other components. But what could also be a component here, for example, a single screen. A single screen obviously also contains some kind of lifecycle, because when the user is on that screen, the lifecycle is active. But when they then maybe pop the backstack, go back to the previous screen, that screen is not active anymore. Therefore, we will also build such subcomponents which correspond to a, to a single screen. So we can also define the navigation logic between these components. First of all, what we need in such a root component is the so-called component context. You can think of this like the context on Android. So it just gives us some extra information about the current lifecycle, for example, but also helps us to implement a behavior like for navigation, for example. And to really get that behavior, I want to use the component context interface, implement that and delegate all that to our component context that we passed here. And now what this component context provides us here is we can have a navigation. 
And that navigation is a simple stack navigation. So stack navigation is what we used to on Android. We have a stack when we go to the next screen that uh, lands on top of our stack. When we then go to the previous screen, so we click back, for example, then we pop that uh, topmost screen from the back stack and we get to the previous screen. Decompose also offers different mechanisms for navigation apart from stack navigation. But since yeah, that is what we typically use on Android, I want to stick to that in this video, so to this stack navigation. And what the stack navigation here wants from us is a so-called configuration. What is a configuration? Well, that is something we have to define ourselves. A configuration in Decompose really refers to the config behind such a component. So the config behind such a screen, for example, what could that be? That could be, for example, the set of parameters, so screen or navigation arguments that we pass to that screen. So let me just type this off and then I think it will get clear. If we have a sealed class here called configuration and we include all of our screens that we want to have in our app here in this configuration sealed class, on the one hand, for example, we have a data object screen A, which is a configuration. And then we have a data class screen B, a data class because our screen B requires a parameter. If we take a look back in our app, then you can see this is the string that we want to pass from screen A to screen B. Therefore, we want to add that to our configuration of screen B, well, text, which is the text we pass. And that is now a configuration as well. So therefore, we can still have one screen, which is screen B, which always looks the same with different configurations because we could, on the one hand, open screen B with a text hello world, but then we could also have another open instance of uh, screen B with a text test, for example. And therefore, these two same screens, which are both screen B, have different configurations, which in this case refer to the uh, navigation arguments we pass. And this configuration needs to be passed to this stack navigation here. Here it's important that this configuration is actually serializable, which is why we need to add this Kotlin X serialization library, because obviously when we navigate from screen one to screen two, then uh, the library somehow needs to serialize the data we have here. On Android, it will probably, um, yeah, just pass it as a JSON string, because that is what we added, Kotlin X serialization JSON, but all that will be handled by the library. So we also want to add this, in, uh, this annotation here, and here, and then we are good. Another CL class we need to define here is called child. In the context of a decompose, a child is really just a screen. So here in this CL class, we define all the screens our app has. On the one hand, we have screen A, which is our initial screen. And this now needs the context, the component context of our screen A. So now we need to have another subcomponent just like this root component, which is used for our screen A, which then again has a life cycle for as long as screen A is active and on the back stack. So let's just define such an empty screen A component for now. We will extend that code a little bit later in this video. In this navigation folder, new class, and we call this screen A component. So this is now a subcomponent of our root component. But the same as our root component, this screen A component also has a component context. And we also want to make this a component context by component context. This way we can really structure our app's navigation in form of a graph, um, which is typically also referred to a nav graph. So if we take a look here um, in uh, under component, you can see here we can uh, form such a hierarchy. For example, here under pluggable UI hierarchy, we have our UI. This would be, for example, our root nav graph or main nav graph, which connects all other nav graphs. Then here we would have nav graph for feature one. You would have the first screen of feature one, the second screen of feature one. You would have the nav graph for feature two, um, first screen of feature two, and so on. So that is really how we can uh, form the same kind of structure for our screen and navigation as we are used to on Android. I want to do the same for screen B. So screen A component, copy paste, call that screen B component. And here, one change I want to make is I want to have a val text since this screen B component requires a text um, field, a text parameter, which we would like to access here in our component. And these single screen components can now really be thought of view models for these particular screens. So with the setup that we will use for this, 
uh, the, the state that we're defining, these components will also be retained on screen rotations. So if you stick to what I show you here, you really don't need view models anymore because these components would be the replacement for that. Because in the end, a view model is just a lifecycle or a component. And whether we call that view model or component in our shared code section, that doesn't matter. But for now, let's switch back to the root component. Where we want to define our different uh, screens, which are called children. So single child. And here this first screen A now takes a reference to this screen A component. Oh, let's just call it component. And that is of type screen A component. And that is of course a child. And we also want to have this screen B where we just replace this with screen B component. Okay, what is next? Next up, we want to define a little function which creates our um, child from a given configuration. So we just check, okay, is the configuration screen A? We want to create a screen A reference. Is it screen B? We create the screen B reference. So let's call this create child. It will take the config on the one hand and it will take the context. And it will then return a child right here. So we can say return when the config is, I'll enter to add the remaining branches. If the config is, um, whoops, that looks weird. The config is configuration screen A. Then we want to return child dot screen A. And here we now need to create this screen A component. We can just do this with a normal constructor. Oh, I don't know why it always prepends navigation. Um, so screen A component and the component context of this is just the context we pass to this function. And the same should happen for screen B. So here we have screen B component. This time we also need the uh, text attribute, which we can get from the config in this case. So config.text and also make sure that this is screen B. And then we don't have any more errors. The last thing we need to create is the so-called child stack. So that is really where the magic happens. That is the internal logic of decompose, which manages the navigation and the navigation stack. So we have val child stack is equal to um, a child stack, which we can create like this. A little bit complex to create that. On the one hand, we need a source, which is just the navigation we have above. Then we need a serializer, which uh, defines for the child stack how to serialize the configuration from here. Uh, thanks to Carlton serialization, we can just pass configuration dot serializer. We need an initial configuration. So the initial screen, the first screen that shows up, that is just our screen A. Next up, we can say handle back button, set that to true. So it automatically handles back clicks and pops the back stack in that case. And last but not least, we have a child factory, which is yeah just a factory function, which we've created before, which creates the children based on the config that this child factory passes. So just create child. And if we take a look at what this child tag really is, you can see that it's just a value. What is a value? A value in decompose is really um, just the observable state type of decompose. So it's really the equivalent to Jetpack Compose state, the equivalent to a state flow. And they decided to use a custom class for that to, to keep it open to you what you want to convert that to. So whether you want to use RxJava, whether you want to use state flow, compose state, that is something you can choose um, thanks to them making that a value and their own custom class. But let's now take a look at how we need to manipulate and change the single subcomponent. So screen A component and screen B component. I've already said that we can kind of treat them as view models now. So that means we can include our normal screen state here in these components. So in this case, the text, so private bar, let's have underscore text. In this case, it's again a mutable uh, mutable value. Here you could also use state floor or so since you are in the shared code section of Kotlin. But I would like to use the mutable value, so the um, observable data type of the decompose library. And initially, you have an empty string. We then want to say we have a val text without an underscore, the immutable version, um, which is not a state, but rather a value of type string. And we then set that equal to the text. So we only expose the immutable variant of that state field. And then what we commonly do is we have some kind of steel interface which defines all the user actions a user could potentially perform on a screen. So clicking a button, entering something in a text field. Uh, and I would also like to have this kind of structure for our uh, screen components. So let's go to navigation, define screen A event. Let's call it like that. Make that a sealed interface. Open this block of code. And here we want to have our two events. So basically, um, what a user can do on the first screen, that is on the one hand to enter something in the text field, 
And on the other hand, it is to click on the button to get to the next screen. So on the one hand, data object, um, let's call it click button A, or just, yeah, let's, let's call it click button A, screen A event. And we have a data class called update text with the new text that we pass here. So these are the events we now, or we will later send from the UI itself. Screen A event. And then we want to go to our screen A component again, have an on event function, which takes these events. So screen A event. And here we have a when block. We can just check what kind of event that is. I'll enter to add the remaining branches. If we click button A, well, what do we want to do in that case? In that case, we want to navigate to the next screen. So how do we do that here? We don't really want to do that here in this component. We want to keep it more flexible and more pluggable. So we want to rather expose a lambda. Whoops, what am I doing here? Um, I want to rather expose a lambda, something like a private val, on navigate to screen B, which is a lambda that takes in a string. So the value you want to pass to the next screen and doesn't return anything. So if we have that, we can now call or trigger this lambda here. And the string we want to pass is just our text.value. So the actual string that is currently in our text field. If we want to update the text, however, we can simply say text.value is event.text. So how do we now perform the navigation? Because that is really what this library is about. Let's find out. Since we, of course, expose this lambda to the root component, since that is where we create the screener component, let's go in there. You can see we now get an error in here, and we can resolve that. On the one hand, let's have a name parameter here for the component context to make it a bit more clear. And on the other hand, we now have our lambda on navigate to screen B. And here in this root component, we now have access to this navigation. And that is how we can also perform this navigation. So we get the string here, we get the text, and we can now say navigation dot push. And that will push a new screen, a new configuration here on top of our backstack. I'd like to use push new. That is a new function of decompose. Um, so sometimes it happens if you quickly um, press a button before the navigation happened, uh, then two screens will be pushed to the back stack and this push new function will just uh, make sure if you are already at that screen where you want to navigate to, then nothing will happen. So push new, we then want to add the configuration which you want to push, that is screen, or actually configuration dot screen B, we want to go to screen B and the text is just our text. We also need to add this experimental decompose API. So I'll enter, opt into that. And that is how we navigate. So you can see all the navigation logic now is, is not defined in the UI itself, but rather in these pure Kotlin classes. And the same we can now do in screen B component, because what we want to be able to do here is we want to be able to go back. If we take a look in our app here, this is the go back button, which will simply pop our back stack and uh, lead us to the previous screen. We can do this the same way by just extending the constructor with a lambda private val um, on go back, for example. And then we have a function here, go back. We don't need the uh, events here. So just like we did here, you could of course also do this for the screen B, but we only have one single action in this simple example. So we just want to trigger our lambda in this single function. And then we can go to root component again, because we again get an issue here. On the one hand, we want to define our text. Then we want to define our component context. And last but not least, we want to define our on go back lambda in which we want to simply refer to navigation and say pop. And that will just pop the back stack as we're used to on Android. And that is already everything for the shared navigation logic. So the cool thing about this is, of course, that we have all this logic now in pure Kotlin code. That means we can run and test this logic with a local unit test. We don't need to spin up some, some UI device in order to UI test the navigation logic. And we can also test this at a single place. So if we target four platforms, we only need one test which tests them all. If you want to be more flexible with testing, you can also make these components an interface. Um, that is also what you will see in the documentation of Decompose. So you can swap these out with um, test doubles, for example, for testing. But for the sake of simplicity, um, I decided to not do this for this video. So let's next go to Kotlin main to the shared code and define our single screens. So the actual UI for that. I want to make a new folder for that called screens. And then I want to have a screen A, simple file. 
just a normal composable called screen A. And this screen A will now just get our component, the um, component, which is the screen A component. And that now contains the whole state for component A. So this text field in this case, and it also allows us to send events to that component. So it's really just like a view model. Okay, so on the one hand, we want to get our state, which is a var text by component dot text. And there's already an extension to subscribe to the value as a compose state. I'll enter to import that, um, change to val. Yes, that needs to be a val. And then we get this text as a compose state so we can easily observe that. And let's just have a simple column. So we're first building our screen A here with a text field and the button modifier modifier.fill max size. Let's say we want to center everything horizontally. So alignment dot center horizontally. And a vertical arrangement is arrangement dot center. Then we want to have a little text that says we are on screen A. We want to have our text field. Well, let's make it an outline text field. The value is just our text. On value change, so when the text changes, we now want to use our component and send that new text to our component so it can update the state. Um, this is update text and we send the new text and we want to have a modifier here which is modifier.filmx width and let's add a little bit of padding um, padding of 16 dp and I'll enter to import that dp value. And last but not least, let's have a little button to go to the next screen. On a click, in this case, we again want to trigger an event of our component. So component dot on event screen a event dot click button a because that is really what happens when we click on that button. The text of the button can be go to screen B and that should already be the UI for our screen A. Let's duplicate that screen so we can also have that for screen B. Rename this to screen B, this to screen B component, of course. I'll enter to import that. Um, here we don't have a state, so we can remove this line. We want to change this to screen B. Here we don't have an outline text field, but rather just a button to go back. So go back. And when we click this button, we say component dot go back. Cool. In screen A, we still have an issue. Um, what is it? Okay, it seems like it's just a bug. Um, let's go to app. So that is really the, the root composable of our Compose multi-platform project. And here we now want to really use the screen A and screen B together with the navigation logic we've defined in our root component. So let's first of all remove everything that we have here in our material theme block. And what really happens here is we get our child stack. So what we define in our root component, which really contains our navigation stack, and we observe that as a normal compose state. So by the root component that our app gets, by root.childStack.subscribe as state. So that way we just get that uh, child stack and now decompose adds a composable for us, which is called children, which takes this child stack. So here we can pass this and this children composable will handle all the navigation logic for us. So it will now take the logic with the find in the root component and just make sure that the right screen is shown. And this is now completely independent of the normal composed navigation way because under the hood, this probably just uses some kind of animated content block and then swaps out the composables depending on um, the, the most up-to-date or the most recent screen. That's also why we can define any type of animation here. So we can have an animation which is um, actually just a stack animation. So there's some predefined animations. And here we could pass something like slide. So we have a normal slide animation. You can also um, create your custom animations here, but let's keep it simple again. Here in this block, we then get the current child. So the screen we are at, and then we can check what that is to lead the user to the correct composable. I'll enter um, actually wildchild.instance that refers to the seal class we've created. And then we can hit Alt Enter to add the remaining branches. If we're on screen A, we want to create the screen A composable with child.instance.component. Uh, and let's actually also have val instance here and then refer to that instance here. So to the component of the instance. 
And then we also do the same for screen B. Here we then pass instance.component again. And that is how that works. That is everything we need to do for the shared code section. The only little change we need to make for Android is we need to go to Android main, Kotlin, com, open main activity. And here we of course need to pass the uh, root component. In Android, we need to create this with um, val root is equal to retained component. Um, that is important. You know, retained will make sure that uh, the state will also survive screen rotations. For that, it's important that you don't pass some kind of activity reference or um, a fragment reference to your components because then you would cause a memory leak. Uh, but that is also what I yeah what you can do with a normal Android View model. So um, the same rules apply here for decompose. Uh, don't pass activity context to your uh, components. Don't pass fragment context, and then you're good. So in here, we can then just have our root component, root component, and we pass it. So the component context this block gives us. And then we can pass our root component down here in our app composable. Let's remove the preview. And the same works on iOS. So in iOS main, main view controller, this is the, the main entry point for the iOS compose code. Here we just want to define um, our root as well. Set that equal to remember and just create the root component manually here with a default component context. And this needs a lifecycle, which we can just uh, create with a lifecycle registry. So we just create the default um, lifetime for this component. We can then pass it here and that's it. I would say let's try this out and run this app on our Android device first. It should just look like this after it was launched. There we go. Um, by default, it uses Material 2, um, but you can just switch that to Material 3 if you want in the um, dependencies. Let's ignore that for now um, and type something here. Test, rotate, see if that survives screen rotations. Yes, it does. Rotate back. Go to screen B. There is our uh, transition to screen B. Um, we don't display that value yet, uh, I'm just noticing, but that is very straightforward. Here in our screen B composable, we would just need to pass the text here as a parameter and then add the value here. And when we then call this screen B here in our app, we first of all say um, instance.component.text. So we pass the text to our screen B. If we relaunch this, we type something here, go to screen B. You can see now the navigation argument is properly passed. If we go back, we get to the previous screen. If we navigate back, we also get to the previous screen and we have a normal um, backstack behavior. This is the previous app, so <laughs> this isn't, isn't a bug. How do we try this on iOS? Well, for that, we want to go to iOS app, this folder here, open this and open this Xcode project and then open this workspace file in Xcode. So right click, open in Xcode. Then this window will open up. We want to open our iOS app, I think, no, actually the content view. And since we credit the product with the um, Compose multi-platform wizard, all that code is already set up that we need to make this run on iOS. Um, no such module Compose app is pretty normal that it shows that initially we can try to launch it and maybe after a build that works. If it fails, we might need to rebuild our um, Compose multi-platform app in Android Studio. But let's try that first of all, check our simulator. And it seems like everything is running fine. So we do see our app here. We can type something, go to screen B, navigation is working perfectly fine. Going back also works, super cool. I especially love how easy it is nowadays to um, just make your application run on iOS. And you can see um, we don't need to add any Swift code. It's all set up and all the rest of the code is defined in the shared code section of our uh, Android Studio project. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then you will definitely also enjoy my more advanced Android Premium courses, which you can all find by clicking the first link down below. So they will just contain details and topics that I never covered on YouTube before that are still super relevant for the industry. So if you want to get ready for the industry as an Android developer, check them out. And other than that, thanks for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.